Oh my gosh, it's episode number three. This is the Liam Jones Fine Art Webcast, and we are here for you to bring you art and amusing stuff, stuff that's entertaining, stuff that's interesting, stuff that's artistic and promotes creativity, little joy of life, a little bit of culture, you know, some, some art to make things smooth, to make your life more meaningful and worthwhile, something to make your coffee taste better, make your book a little bit more enjoyable, to uh, feed the curious mind. That's why we're here. I'm here for you to uh, share with you my more than 20 years of experience as an artist, uh, the things that I love, that I'm passionate about. Um, and uh, I'm joined by my little figurine friend over here, who is obviously a very important part of the show today. So. Uh, let's get on with it. This is episode number three. Welcome. Today I'm going to make a connection between art for art's sake and life for life's sake. Uh, the value of a human life. For some reason, I see a connection there. So it just kind of went like that, and I recorded some material a couple of days ago on that, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, as that's going to be playing, there's a painting that I worked on from my dad and finished that up the other day. What this painting is is a straight-up landscape. It's based off of a photograph I took last fall of some trees in my area, and it came out kind of nice. So I took those photographs, one of those photographs, and made it into a couple of different paintings. The interesting thing about it was I wasn't just doing a straight up landscape because I don't like just normal, traditional art. There always has to be something different. So what I tried to do here was a printing technique called a, a, a transfer. And it went horribly wrong, but it didn't go wrong immediately. What happened was I did the transfer and everything looked awesome. I varnished it over. And then over the course of weeks and months, the image faded out to white. Like there was a film that happened, like a frost over top of the colors. And it just ruined the thing. So after I gave the painting to my dad, it just deteriorated. So I took it back and I recorded the process of repainting it in a more traditional sense. And it came out nice. So this is the time-lapse video uh, that'll play in the background as I play the footage about art for art's sake, life for life's sake. Hope you enjoy it. Once you put words to something, it becomes that thing that you've put words to. And the words abstract out something from it and take away from it. You actually lose the power of that thing that you're trying to describe once you put words to it, once you put a label to it, which is kind of cool and you see it all over the place. Um, people don't want to be labeled. You don't want to put a label on something. You know, you want to keep it as true as possible. And that's what modernism and art for art's sake is an attempt to do. It's to try to, to keep art as true and as powerful as possible. And to take that out of the art world, and this we're not just talking about art for art's sake or modernism anymore, we're talking about being the real you, getting in touch with who you are. And that's a really tough one to get to. You know, where does your value come from? Why are you important? Why does your life matter? The thoughts that you have, minute by minute, second by second. Um, every action that you take has never been done before. Every moment that you live is completely now. And the context you live in has never been repeated before. And your life, though it may seem unremarkable in relation to everyone else's life, is actually completely and totally original absolutely original the other day i watched the movie the joker joker um, and this struck me 
Um, and if, if you haven't seen it, um, that's fine. I'm going to describe to you basically what happens here. So it, it's, it's a tragedy um, where this, this guy who is weak and he's sad, he's been abused his whole life. His life is extremely small. Like he's just, you know, it's, he's tiny. He had been raised by a mom who had a, a extreme mental illness and completely delusional. And he's just taking care of his mom who his mom was like nuts. She tied him to a radiator and abused him horribly as, as he was a kid. So his life is just like a cloud of darkness and meaningless and ineffectual. And I mean, they, they, they drill the point home. And as I was watching that, I have, I, I related to it and I'm sure a lot of other people have, and it's, it's probably why the, the movie is so successful because it's, it's sure it's about a comic character, but it's not about a comic character. It, it touched on the feeling that, that I've had and I'm sure that everyone else has had is that your life can feel at times like it's totally and utterly futile and meaningless. Maybe your life has been uh, miserable from start to finish, which is highly unlikely, by the way. And of course, this movie um, was taking that and stretching it out because no one's life, as far as I know, has been complete and total misery. Um, there's always little beautiful things happening. Um, but what happens in the Joker is that he starts expressing what he's going through and he, he tries to do some stand up comedy, uh, and you know, spoiler alerts here, but basically he ends up being the Joker, you know, which is because it's, it's an origin story. So I guess that's not really a spoiler, but what was amazing was the way that the writers of this movie, and it was all the writers, uh, tied the, that sense of hopelessness and futility to, to the movement that became the Joker, who is the Batman's arch nemesis, the most dangerous person in Gotham City. Um, and it happens in this really organic way that ties together how even someone whose life is pointless and awful can make a massive difference even if it's totally bad and in this case it really you know he becomes a, a psychotic murderer right but what was also amazing is he goes from being unable to even string a sentence together you know in front of people to being a person of incredible influence and confidence because the joker is notorious for being you know, exaggerated in a personality and just overdone. Um, so it's a beautiful piece of artwork for me in that sense, because it shows an, uh, kind of how, in, in a way, there can be emergent power from a sense of feeling powerless and, and puny and non-existent invisible right um, because because even if you feel that way you know it's hard to really say that that that's not the truth right it, it honestly if you're gonna be completely honest completely and brutally honest which when you're going through depression or if you're going through you know a completely honest and realistic examination of your life that feeling is has some validity to it, right? And yet, see, in the Joker movie, he expresses those things and he captures a zeitgeist of discontentment and of Marxism and of people who want to kill the rich and feel that, you know, the government is against them and the rich are taking all their money. And, and so he becomes a catalyst for this, like, violent revolution and the beginning of a, a criminal organization. And that's fiction. Um, it's, it's a great work of art, uh, in the sense that it caught that, but it's still fiction in real life. There are arguments for and against your meaning as a human being. Um, and 
someone like Clement Greenberg talking about art for art's sake, talking about modernism and how you can make a painting that doesn't have any kind of an identity crisis. Doesn't, it doesn't want to be something else. The painting isn't trying to be something else. My friend, let's call him Wendell, this plastic figurine, let's say that Wendell doesn't want to be anyone else. He's really happy just being a figurine. He, he likes being a figurine. That would be the beginning of avant-garde art, the highest form of art. Unfortunately, Wendell, Wendell is uh, he's a tool. He's, he's nothing but a tool. Um, I use him to draw to get proportion right. That's it. We don't really talk much. He's, he's a great listener. He's not a real good talker. Doesn't have a lot of profound things to say. But he helps me out with proportion. That that he does. Um, when it comes to where your meaning in life comes from, uh, part of my disgusting sense of humor, by the way, I'm just... Something about being in front of a camera. I've become a different person. Um, the meaning of of your life is not yours to make. And that's, that's an idea um, that the Joker doesn't really touch on. Uh, the Joker says the exact opposite. The, his, he made his own meaning by venting his disgust with everybody and becoming a murderer and doing it in fantastic fashion. In real life, uh, your meaning is there whether you recognize it or not in the same way that when you do a painting that you spent hours and hours and hours doing has value whether someone buys it or not or recognizes it or not and even more so because a human being is a greater work of art than any canvas than any movie than any novel than any than than the Sistine Chapel a single human being is worth more than the Sistine Chapel in my opinion um there's, there's inherent worth in every human being. And art, in a really strange way, showcases that. And eventually, um, I'm, I'm going to have to talk about the Renaissance and humanism in art because that's, it's obviously something that I'm passionate about, right? Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in how amazing a human being is. When we talk about the min the mystery of consciousness, it, it, regardless of whether you know you feel depressed or down, the fact that you're thinking and you're alive um, is an absolute bloody miracle. It's unbelievable, and it's it's impossible to understand. We're we're trying, we're doing our best, and we're working at it, and we're actually we're making a lot of progress. There's a lot of progress being made in trying to understand consciousness. And if you don't think that you have any value, just go check out what they're doing at Boston Mechanics, um, Boston Robotics, um, and see what they're doing, you know, trying to make cars that drive themselves and trying to understand how the mind works how it recognizes objects and, uh, you know, so to the point where a car can drive itself. And to think that we were born with that in a brain, um, that we were, you know, okay, so maybe I'm just not going to try to ram my religion down your throat. Uh, and we're just going to talk about the mystery of consciousness. Okay, cool, cool. So it's really tough. It's really tough to understand. And it's definitely not futile to break it down and to try to understand all the various mysteries that go into consciousness, like perception, like the, your, your, your five senses, six if you believe in ESP. Um, or maybe there's even more than that. Who knows, you know? Um, it's... It's a fantastic, wild mystery where consciousness comes from. And consciousness, of course, is that primordial goop out of which art and everything else comes from. So the discussion about avant-garde art, modernism, art for art's sake, is a great starting point for this webcast because 
it starts to touch on things like consciousness and on uh, perception and on human creation and human value on how you live your life and how you see yourself and the people around you. Um, that's my take on it. And as I say, it, it's arguable and that's, that's fine. But as I've gone through my own life and, and gone through some real hard times and some really, really good times, it's, it's art and creation and creativity that gives me consistent pleasure and joy. Um, being able to do paintings like this landscape uh, that, I'm, that I'm doing for my dad um, is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege and it's an honor to be able to do it um, and to be able to talk about it and, and share these ideas. And if you're interested in it, I, I'm so thankful that you're here and that you're listening to it because, you know, art isn't exactly, you know, a reaction video to a hip hop song. Um, a podcast about art and creativity and drawing is not as entertaining as a really pretty girl with a nice butt, you know? Um, and yet people are here and people do follow it. And these long conversations full of, of ideas like this, ideas exploring things like consciousness or exploring the the abstract primordial goop of where we come from um they're worthwhile conversations because they touch on how you live your life and how you perceive yourself and how you perceive the people around you um, the more we understand things like consciousness and and look to science and scientists and psychologists and neuroscientists and physics the more we recognize um, as a species, as a, as a global think tank, you know, that there's, there's something amazing about human beings. There's something amazing about the human being ability to create. And so by extension, there's something amazing about the things that we create. Oh... I have ideas to talk about, but I have to go. It has been my distinct pleasure to talk at this camera and by extension to you. Have a great one, folks. Be creative. Enjoy. Sip, drink, and be merry. Break bread. Meet your friends. Hug your parents. Life is good. Have a good one. Bye now. So there you have it. That's podcast webcast number three. And my attempt at being somewhat inspirational, maybe a little bit in depth and funny at times. I don't know, but uh, giving it my best shot. Thanks for coming along with me. Not completely awful, I hope. And uh, of course, by the time I get to video 100, I'll look at back at this and just cringe. I'm sure. And I'm sure people watching this probably cringed a couple of times too. Uh, I know I did anyway, but hey, you never get good until you at least take some risks and, and suck for a while, you know, but uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks folks. See you next week.